Hey everybody, I'm Psalm Wine Guy, and I have got some wine for you. This is the 2021 Pio Cesare Gavi. This is a wine made from Cortese, from the Gavi DOCG in southeastern Piedmont in northern Italy. It's part of the October Some Wine Club box, uh, and a, a great variety that I haven't had in one of the boxes before. Uh, I mean, understandably, as Cortese, the grape variety of Gavi, is, is a relatively minor grape of Italy. Even within the region, Cortese is, is not particularly widely planted. It's really only planted in Gavi and in the surrounding villages in Monferrato and Colli Tortanozzi. So, Pio Cesare, the winery, uh, is in the center of the town of Alba, uh, which is one of the historical centers of Piedmont near the Barolo and Barbaresco zones. Uh, and it's actually one of the one of the only urban wineries uh, in in northern Italy. It's built into the medieval cellars of the town. That's where the actual winery is. It was started in 1881. It's been operating in Alba since then, so over 140 years now. And the cellar is actually built on the ruins of the ancient Roman castle that uh, occupied the same space. So 2,000 year old walls. Uh, that then the town was then built on top of, and they form the bottom portion of the cellar walls. You can see in pictures these ancient stones. So they made their name with Barolo and Barbaresco, Nebbiolo-based reds from the villages around Alba, uh, but they produce Gavi from uh, partners, families that they've been working with for multiple generations that are are based in the east, uh, southeast of Alba, in the southeast corner of Piedmont, uh, and this is all coming from the Cortese grape variety. If you've never had one, now you can't say that anymore. Uh, so the person that started the winery uh, was not named Pio Cesare, it's Cesare Pio. Uh, so they just, the name is flipped for the name of the winery versus the name of the, the founder, uh, and was quite a prolific entrepreneur and traveler uh, and that's kind of part of the reason why the winery was so successful is because they dedicated so much of their time and so much of their energy to promoting the brand uh, around the world and they they say on their website that they proudly display uh, Cesare's passport in the winery which has the number 55 on it which I'm assuming is in reference to that was the 55th passport that was issued which is wild. I mean, this was the early 1900s, so understandably, there was probably not a lot of international travel happening from winery representatives in northern Italy, uh, but they've continued that tradition now into the fifth generation of the family who works uh, alongside the fourth generation and continues to promote these wines uh, around the world. Uh, I have had a little bit of experience with Gavi, but not nearly as much as I would like, and so we're kind of getting back into the swing of things together. Uh, all done in stainless steel, so really capturing vibrancy. They do a lot of lees work and yeast contact to add texture uh, and a nuttiness to this wine. Uh, and 2021 Vintage was a difficult, but in the end, surprisingly good vintage in Piedmont. There was some frost and hail at the beginning of the season, but then they had beautiful weather all the way through kind of the summer months of July, August, September into October, making for really beautiful ripe fruit uh, and, and quite an impressive end to the year. Lots of ripeness here, lots of juicy citrus. There's ripe lemon, quince, peaches and pears and tree fruit. I can definitely pick up on the nuttiness, that Lee's contact. It smells a little bit like a half of Eisen, like a citrusy wheat beer, that almond or peanut shell is that kind of nuttiness to it, which adds a lot of depth here. Orange blossom, there's some floral undertones as well. And then crushed rocks, crushed stone, mineral character. A little bit of the spiciness, um, like spiced pears. Or, and that's that's going to be just variety because, like I said, this is done all on stainless steel. They're not adding any oak character here, so they're not going to get spices from anything except for just uh, the terroir and the grape variety.
medium bodied, bone dry, but with really good fruit ripeness. Like you feel the roundness of the wine. The texture is really great. I get this kind of lingering residual textural note in my in my mouth and my palate. And then the acidity is just super refreshing, cleansing, kind of salty, mineral, acid. Historically, these wines in Gavi were created to kind of pair with the seafood of, of Genoa and of the Ligurian coastline, which is only like a few, like a hundred kilometers away to the Mediterranean. So lots of seafood focus with this style of wine with that salty citrus character as well. I think about mussels, I think about shellfish, uh, I think about something that's really easy, captures a lot of herbs and citrus like lemon and leeks and onion and you get these kind of underlying vegetal characteristics. Uh, and it's such a simple, easy thing to put together. It's just butter, wine, leeks, onions, uh, lemon, and then steam and just crusty bread. and. You have, like I said, maybe one of the all-time greatest uh, one-pot easy seafood dinners that is very impressive to everybody looking from the outside. I think there's flexibility here. The acidity, the texture, and the weight takes this from being a wine that is very light. Uh, the Lee's contact and... <clears throat> The kind of richness of the fruit gives this a little bit more body, gives this a little bit more, uh, like I said, opportunity to step up in terms of flavor and richness. So other dishes with a little bit more concentration to it, whether it's seafood pasta or uh, creamier dishes where you can use that acidity to cut through the fattiness of the cream or richness and butter. And I just love that lingering, like spiced peachy note on the finish. It's delicious. Uh, it's it's kind of unfortunate that Cortese is such a a relatively obscure white grape variety for Northern Italy because it does have a place on our tables and is such a spectacular wine to experience. And it comes from such a unique part of Piedmont that focuses on on white versus on red. When we often think about Piedmont, it's Barolo, Barbaresco, Lenge, Nebbiolo, and the, the bigger reds. Uh, but everything in balance, everything in moderation. Can't drink Nebbiolo all the time. Gotta drink Cortese. That was a good sign when I'm starting to run out of wine. Uh, that's great. I think that that's uh, a wonderful way to kind of transition from warmer weather into cooler weather. You get Kind of that that steamy broth or or creamy pasta something that's going to warm you from the inside and still having a wine that is refreshing at the same time so enjoy thank you very much uh pio cesare gavi and, and i will see you all next time cheers